Hello to you all and welcome to another instalment of the Pitcast by us here at the Pit Crew Online, from the fans, for the fans. On this week's episode, we come ready to recap what was an absolutely chaotic Emilia Romagna Grand Prix, and I can't wait to get into it. I'm your host, Adam Wheeler, resident IndyCar editor at the Pink Crew Online, and joining us today are three guests and fellow crew personnel, the first of which is our eSports uh, editor, Luca. Hello, I have the prodigal son has indeed returned. I've been aware for a while because of uni commitments. And if my uh, lecturer gets word that I've done this, instead of been doing uni work, he's going to whoop me. I, I feel like I haven't seen you on here since before Christmas, Luca. I think yes, around I've, about that. I've been very, it's my third year of university. I have to knuckle down. So yeah, it's getting, it's getting serious now. You can't go partying now on there. <laughs> I don't party anyway, even before COVID. Anyway, Just introduce the others before. Exactly. Talk. Okay. Okay. So also joining us, we have someone who is becoming a bit of a regular on here. Uh, we have a BTCC editor, Aaron. And guys, glad to be back as ever. I'm uh, part of the furniture now. <laughs> yeah um it's good to have you back though it's good it's good to have um continual guests just coming back on so good to have you back and last but not least he's our resident stat man he's chris say hi chris hi well, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh how are you doing bad. chris you okay yeah i'm not too bad thank you epic race um it kept me entertained Fantastic. Okay, guys, let's talk the Imola Grand Prix. Uh, but before we get into some of the specific topics, you know, what, what did you all make of it? Um, give me your thoughts on the race. Luca, let's start with you. Um, I was pleasantly surprised. Uh, I, I think we can count our lucky stars that it rained because even though we all love Imola, we will never be truly critical about it, not really got offering much of a good race in any circumstance, but it's just such a a great track that it offsets that criticism. But the fact is, is that it was an absolute cracker and I thoroughly enjoyed it. And I was really, really happy with the result as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, th- I mean, I thoroughly agree. I think um, we've been treated actually to two really good races straight off the bat. I don't know what it is, but we, we've been treated to some really interesting weather conditions. We've been interested, treated to some good rivalries, but we'll get into some of those. Um, Aaron, what did you think? Yeah, I enjoyed it. Um, like I said, the, having to wait three weeks between the races wasn't, wasn't amazing, but so it was, long. It was worth it. I mean, the first like ten laps, fifteen laps was awesome. It was like, whoa, what's what's happening? Uh, it, you know, it died down a little bit after that, and then midway through the race, we had the uh, collisions, which sort of brought the excitement level back up. Um, you know, and then we had a thrilling fight to the end with Hamilton just saving his way through the field. So yeah, it was it was quality. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, Chris, any thoughts? Well, it's the track. The old um, sweet prince comes back and bites. It's already putting a claim into um, staying on the calendar. Yeah, it's a classic track, isn't it? Just run off, gravel mm-hmm. traps is exactly what you need. And it's, you know, as soon as the rain came down, I thought, oh my God, this is going to go chaotic. <laughs> like Everyone was just going to go off and get punished. And we did see that, didn't we? But, uh, you know, I think we should talk a little bit about the overarching theme of this season, actually, which is going to be from now on Lewis versus Max, you know, last time out in Bahrain, Max got pole position. Um, and then Lewis snatched the race victory, but this time, uh, Lewis snatched the pole and then Max drove a better race to get the race victory in the end. It was a, almost a complete turn, uh, turn of events. Um, so what did you think of their performances over the weekend? Um, let's start with Aaron. Yeah. I mean, it, it's quality that, We've got two different drivers from two different teams again um, fighting for the race, race wins. Yeah, Max was quality off the start, got got Hamilton into turn one. I thought they were going to hit, I thought they were going to collide, but, you know, they did well to avoid each other into into Tamborello. But, you know, it's, it's testament to the quality of them two drivers that in treacherous conditions, they didn't hit, collide with each other. Um, and it's, like you say, it's setting up this season lovely that we're going to have these two fighting uh, race after race. Um, hopefully for the title and hopefully it'll be close up until the, the end. Yeah. Um, Chris, what did you think of uh, Lewis and Max's performances? Well, Verstappen sort of eclipsed Ralph Schumacher in 2001, third to first. Um, third to first, I think it's only happened nine times in Imola, um, not off the front row winning. A um, bit of argy-bargy um, and then both off into the distance is just going to be them two all season. Um, and then Hamilton's drive, you've got to give him, give him credit for that. Um and then fastest lap, that's up. That's all it could come down to once more. Mm. So roll on Portugal. 
but it's two weeks, unfortunately. But at least it's back to back between Portugal and Spain. Mm, mm. And, uh, you know, uh, it's something about that tenacity about Hamilton, isn't it? I think a lot of people criticise him for not having to overtake that much, not showing his race craft over the past couple of years. But I think that's an absolute fallacy. I think we've seen many examples of Lewis having to make his way through and fight his way through the pack, or at least even through uh, the top five, even fighting to get to the lead. I think that he showed a lot of mental fortitude to go from that position where you know, it's com- you're almost out of the race. You think that you've completely lost everything, but he just had to shut it out, uh, get on with it, and focus on the job at hand. Um, Luca, what did you think of their performances? I must admit, I-, I probably would have been the only one in that instance who was calm about it because I was just like, <laughs> Hamilton's going to save this somehow. I mean, I mean, it might have been like extreme denial, but he, he managed to. And, um, and okay, we I was looking at in the group chat last night ashley um I'm out here. <laughs> no she has a point she, she was she was she, going mad she was she, going mad she made the point that hamilton got off very luckily because of the collision that happened um but yeah I, as i was saying luck is half the battle won and he started in he, re, he did the restart in ninth and he fought back very well and got second in the fastest lap so he leads the championship by one point you would say that if he hadn't made the error in the first place, trying to lap, put a lap on Russell, Hamilton would have started second on the restart and drift, drafted past Verstappen. But there's all these butterfly effects. Of it's it, You never know how, exactly how it's going to work. You can only focus on what did happen. And what did happen was that Hamilton is showing his experience, showing why he's a seven-time champion. He fought back and got the points he could and on to the next one. Yeah, it's got the ingredients, hasn't it, for a really classic season. And I think we're just seeing, you know, the the potential this season has. Um, because I think in the past, as you said, Luca, we've we've had the we've had a glimpse of a really close title fight, and it's just slipped away from us, sort of around the second, third quarter of many many different seasons, to to many people's disappointment. But they seem so neck and neck; those two drivers. Um, and they really were just the class class drivers of the field. Um, you know, Max also, I think, I think we have to say, got a little bit lucky as well because he had that big spin um, before the safety car restart, which could have been a lot worse. It could have been almost Perez's spin, but obviously it didn't. Verstappen got mm. back on track. He got the win. But, you know, both drivers got a little bit of slice of luck, but, you know, they were just something else. I think during the wet part of the race, I think they were something like one to two seconds quicker than anyone else on track, just them two. And I mean, that's insane. Like, <laughs> just how quick they are. They, you know, they were something like 20 seconds ahead of Charles de Klerk, you know, in P3, I think by lap 15 or, or 20. Um, I, I kind of want to bring up the um, the point someone made about um, Lewis getting a little bit lucky uh, just after the red flag, because... We did bring that up in the Bahrain pit cast. That I mean, the the main overall question was was Lewis lucky to win the Grand Prix due to Max's overtake, which obviously exceeded track limits. But he was a lot of people would argue he was gifted that P one due to Max's mistake. And had no, you know, no. all things gone, I <laughs> Luke, no, Luke no, I mean, on the opposite. But hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, but okay, because okay. <laughs> because um, you know, if all things had gone right. Max would have won that race on merit. Of course, he made that mistake and he did obviously have to gift that place back. That's racing. But a lot of people saw Lewis as very lucky to win that because of it. And then in this race, we saw another instance where he was a lap down after the crash. And then the red flag obviously allowed him to re-unlap himself. Some might say he's been very lucky over the past two races. And I think some of you have got a lot of views on that um chris chris do you have something to say and then i'll go i'll go to luca after well we could just catch up with him he might be having all his luck right now that there's circumstances this year where luck could cost him a position mm. um the wingmans aren't at it and you've got to think the second drivers um bottas and perez making mistakes left right and center perez made t- two mistakes i mean ironically spun exactly the same place as albin so it just might catch up, might be having all of his luck now. Mm. Yeah. Um, no, I, I guess you're right. I mean, luck, you know, luck is what you make it. And a lot of people, you know, see it balancing out across the season. You know, it's like football. You know, some people will see you 
very play really badly against a team and scrape a win and sometimes you'll play really well and then unfortunately lose you know sometimes it evens out that way Luca what were you going to say you look really uh well, really wanting to was, say something there I think the luck in Bahrain was the fact that Perez broke down on the formation lap so there was one less lap for Verstappen to have a go at Hamilton and Hamilton mm. just held on in this instance at the rule of being allowed to unlap yourself has been in there since 2012, I think, where yeah. they're all allowed to go go around the once and rejoin at the back of the field. So there's there there is part luck, part actually having to take advantage of the luck. You know, mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, I guess I guess some would say he was unlucky to crash out. If he was lucky, he would have stayed on the track and he would have just gone on and and challenged Verstappen for the win. So <laughs> well, you could say that was actually his own fault, though, because he was the one who. I mean, he was obviously impatient to try and get back up to the back of Verstappen because he was flying at that point. But he, Russell stayed on the um, the dry line. Hamilton went on the wet. It's on fault. Mm. Like, and there's there's no getting around that. No matter what side of the fence you fall on. Mm, mm-hmm. No, absolutely. Um, Aaron, any any quick thoughts before we move on there? Sorry, oh. Aaron, we've been hogging the limelight. No, all right. I, I quite just sit list, like enjoy sit listening. Um, no, I mean, I. I said he was lucky in the last uh, pick cast. It's interesting that I'm here to sort of back my point up again. Um, I think he was lucky to an extent. The rule has been there, as Luca says, but, you know, it's not often it gets so highly, it's so highly influential in the race. Like, often it's just the back backers get onto the lead lap. It's it's usually inconsequential, but in this instance, because it's Hamilton and how quick he is and how quick he showed he is, um, you know, it's not luck to an extent, but it is at the same time. I know that makes no sense whatsoever. <laughs> um, let's move on to our next topic of the race, which is, of course, um, the high profile accident. Uh, there was a few others, of course, um, you know, Nic- Nicholas Latifi, uh, Nick Schumacher hit the wall earlier in the race. But I'm talking specifically about that high speed crash between Valtteri Bottas and George Russell. And there's, you know, there's obviously loads at stake there, isn't there? Because both are aiming for that second Mercedes seat. Russell is in a Williams um, and he was about to overtake Bottas in a Mercedes. Um, so there's a lot of subtext to that accident. Um, so, guys, what did you make of it? Aaron, let's start with you. Oh, it, was, it was so good for so many reasons, like you said. Um, <laughs> I mean, they, they, were, they, were, they were unhurt, though. Let's, let's put it that way. Oh, but, oh, yeah, yeah, it was great. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I'm glad. I'm glad they both go out and had a bit of a, a to do after it. Um, it says a lot for me that Bottas was in that situation where we saw him in Turkey last year spinning. But yeah, I mean, like I say, this is another situation where it's rainy, it's greasy, and Bottas struggles. He's way off the pace, and I mean, it's no disrespect to Williams, but they have no business overtaking a Mercedes. The way I saw it was Bottas squeezed him, and obviously you put your tyre on the paint or on the t- on the grass and it spins you out. Um, so I think it was half a dozen of one and half a dozen of the other. Um, mm. You could probably find faults for both drivers, so it's probably just a racing instant. But, yeah. you know, the, the subtext is they're both fighting for that that last Mercedes seat should Hamilton decide to stay on. And mm. I think Russell did himself a lot of favours despite the crash because he showed he has the guts to go for them kind of manoeuvres. So it's not an easy place to overtake on the outside of Tamborella. Mm. Um, and Bottas, he, he had the worst race of anyone, I think. What, why was he in that position in the first place, Aaron? You know, that's... I, like I say, he just lacks pace in them conditions. Um, he's, I don't know if he's ever do, done well in the rain. Um, Which is weird because he's Finnish and they specifically <laughs> learn how to drive on... Ice and, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, like I said, well, even Kimmy struggled in these finish as well. Um, it's because it's always frozen and never melts. That's why. Well, that, <laughs> it's, that's the theory, it's it? always ice. <laughs> like I said, he just he just has no pace in in what I'd call changeable conditions. Where you know Russell, it was he showed he can do that. He had the, the Williams up in the points, which was a, a feat upon itself. Mm. Um. And like I said, I think he did himself a lot of favours despite what happened in the end. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Chris, uh, what did you what did you make of the crash? Well, it's like that seeks mine. Get out of it. So there was a car's width. Russell has since apologised. Um, 
heated, heated moment. But um, you're saying it, it's not good in changeable conditions. Well, we did qualify eighth after all. It was dry in qualifying. Yeah. I mean, you know, <laughs> lately Bottas has been sort of been touted as more of a qualifier, but he wasn't even there in qualifying. So he can't even say that this weekend. He just, yeah. I mean, if we think about the changeable condition races that Bottas has been in, the, the really noticeable ones, like say Hockenheim, the, that that wet race, you know, he was off, he was off the pace to Lewis and then he went off. And then during that oily track at Turkey where it was just completely, you know, he was off the pace there as well. Uh, go, go for it, Luke. Yeah, go for it. We still can't ignore the fact Bottas was about to get passed by a Williams. Those points would have meant so much for Williams and Russell, had it not been for his Sakia uh, escapades last, last season, he wouldn't have had any points and he's never scored from Williams. Um, so I think he was really desperate for it. And mm-hmm. then you could argue, oh, well, you, didn't, you shouldn't have tried to go for a move that wasn't on. But that's just natural. Like what Aaron said, it's indicative of all racing drivers. They go for a move. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. My, my one worry, though, I did read something about Mercedes may have to fork into the budget to fix Bottas's car. And apparently that's going to delay some kind of upgrade. It's done the chassis in, so they're going to spend more money building a new chassis for Portugal than they are putting upgrades towards yeah. the Portuguese car. We have been talking up Russell having been the, the prime candidate for the Mercedes drive. And and that taster Sakia really put him in the mindset that I'm ready for a Mercedes drive. And we have all thought that too. And apparently this weekend is gonna, gonna ruin all that, apparently. No, I don't see it. I think I still think Russell that despite his perhaps one uh, excusable weekend of being irrational hasn't cost him a Mercedes drive. And I, and I still think he's going to get that Mercedes drive and he would deserve it. I, I yeah. honestly think he deserves that seat. Yeah, I, I agree. I think that um, although maybe Russell lacks, maybe you could argue maybe lacks some racecraft experience or, or, or something along that line, some sort of mentality that's still lacking. Um, I, on the other side, you could say, no, we've seen enough or, for him in Sakir and in so many different situations in qualifying that proof he is ready for that seat. Um, I I think that uh, this experience will, will, will teach him a lot. I think this experience will teach him possibly maybe maybe what to do or maybe what not to do in a race situation maybe maybe he'll realize maybe an overtake that may seem too audacious in changeable conditions maybe isn't worth it at a time in a race maybe he'll learn from those and it'll make him a stronger driver in the future um but i agree with you luca and i think that russell is already set for that mercedes seat regardless of what happens i think they've already sort of decided that He's going to be in that seat, um, whether it's next year, whether it's two years. And the more Bottas underperforms, the more that just makes it so much more of an easier decision. Because we all know that Mercedes sort of makes that call sort of around halfway through the season, sort of around Spa or just kind of or maybe three quarters of the way through the season. Um, If we get to a stage where maybe come Monaco or come Baku that he's still underperforming and on a regular basis, you know, they, <laughs> they might already decide at that point, you know, come midway through the season, we're going to, we're going to announce it. I just want to say maybe 2022, because we always saw how like throughout his dominance, Michael Schumacher had Rubens Barrichello as a teammate. And then that one year when there's a big regulation change, he has a young upstart in Felipe Massa as a teammate and then he retires maybe that's going to happen with Hamilton he's going to have one year alongside Russell in with the 2022 regulations overall and then he'll retire I think Russell will be in that seat next year no matter what happens say Hamilton retires they'll promote Russell if Hamilton stays on they'll promote Russell um, I think he'll do a year with Hamilton to nurture him who better to learn off than Lewis Hamilton and I think George can learn, learn a lot from him put him in, in good stead to lead that team, hopefully come 2023. Um, he's a good driver. And like I said, this weekend won't have scuppered any chances he's had of getting in that seat. Cause he's shown how good he is in that Williams. Um, guys, um, second to last thing I want to say before we wrap up is, uh, who is your driver of the day? He's on Lucas' shirt. <laughs> Lando. 
for those who can't yeah. say, yeah, it's a Lando Norris one. That's yeah, I guess because it was faultless. Um, Verstappen, sure, he held the spin, but he did make the one slight error. Um, but it's mm. got to be Norris. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm going to go for Ricard. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, I do actually have a Ricardo version of this and a team shirt as well. They uh, as soon as they announced those ones, I, was, I got them immediately. But yeah, Lando Norris easily for me. Yeah, I I do want to highlight. We I mean we've already mentioned him, but I do want to highlight Leclerc's effort as well because he did put in a really good shift in that Ferrari and. I guess even before the red flag, he was in a really high position, you know, on for a, po- he was pretty much on for a podium he had was, that yeah. red flag not happened. So you could argue, you know, he had a really good race. I've always, before Norris came to F1, I was hyping up the, the, the Holy Trinity of Verstappen, Leclerc, Norris. Uh, and then I threw Russell into that when Russell beat Norris in the F2. Um, but the, I, I remember seeing those three and I was like, Oh, I hope I kind of hope that's the podium in a way. Um, and then obviously the red flag happened. That didn't really happen. Apparently they would have um, eclipsed the Gasly Science Stroll podium from Monza last year in terms of average age. It yeah, would have wow. yeah. Much younger, apparently. I don't know. Don't ask me for an exact number. All younger than me. That's, it's depressing. <laughs> Chris, wasn't it like the first double British podium for quite a long time? Yes, the uh, first uh, British podium. I mean, the start I had was that it was the 700th British Podium um, on the um, got the most uh, in history, next to Germany of four hundred and fourteen, um, and then Verstappen was there. So forty six Netherlands podiums, both by Verstappen's, forty four okay. by Max, and two by his dad. Um, um, I think I think um, nineteen sixty eight is the last time it was all three Brits. Wow, that is think, wow. that's something. <laughs> So we, so we we need to have Russell Norris and Hamilton on a podium. We got to have it soon. It'll, anyway, it might happen if if he sticks around for one more year. If Hamilton does does fancy new regs, which seems likely. So guys, looking ahead to Portimao, what are you guys most excited about? Luca, go. The track itself. On a, like I was saying it earlier, I, I, this track is incredible. The the, the elevation change, the corners, all that. It is a joy to just watch. Like the MotoGP were there over the weekend. Um, if you, if anyone here is listening and wants to read up a review on that, read it by the Crown Two's uh, Mandy. Uh, she did a great review on that. Um, the the track is just a roller coaster, um, and we did did make a fairly exciting race last year. Although I do think that was more because it was kind of sub temperature. Mm. Um, but ah, oh, yeah, I was I just was enthralled by that track if that's the correct word. Um, and I, I'm, F1 2021, the gear has just been announced and they will be including Imola and Algarve on that list, although it won't be until like much later on in the game cycle because creating tracks is quite difficult if you're in that business. Um, I'm looking forward to driving it on that game. I mean, I've already driven it on other games, but just like to be in like a race situation on there, I'm, lo- I'm looking forward to that hugely. And what are you most excited about? I mean, it's got to be the, the continuation of Lewis and Max, probably the main thing. Um, like Luke says, it's a quality track. So then you've got two you know, gladiators, so to speak, going so to toe. Yeah, it's going to, it's all bubbling up to be a great race. Yeah, could we see Lewis get his 100th pole position? That oh, is yes. The, that we is the question. We looked over that. Oh. <laughs> um, Chris, what are you looking forward to? You can have pole on Saturday, but will it be the first time since Australia 2013? It won't be a Mercedes or Vettel leading the championship. Um, Ooh. It was Kimi Räikkönen in the Lotus the last time. It wasn't. But yeah, you can, you can, you can have his 100th pole. You can have his centenary. Um, it's getting on a bit. Um, <laughs> and then who gets third place? It'll be, well, we're uh, Perez and Bottas battle for that. You know, a battle for a win, battle for the third place. And then you have the... Uh, three teams battling for the the points again. Mm. Um, Thank you, guys. Thank you all for listening. Uh, If you enjoyed this and want to find more of our content, make sure to look us out on our social medias, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, Spotify, or visit our website at www.thepitcrewonline.net. Um, a special thank you to all of you guys, um, Luca, Chris, and Aaron, for joining us again today. Uh, Guys, where can our listeners find you guys on social media, uh, Luca? Um, you can find me 
on Twitter and Instagram, RedLuca56. Follow me on there. Just don't follow me in real life. <laughs> um, Aaron, where can they find you? Uh, at Aaron Irwin 7 but do, do be warned, it's uh, it's not all motorsports. There's a bit of uh, non-league football in there as well. How dare you? <laughs> I'm a chill, uh, right? I'm a chill. <laughs> If you, I mean, if you follow me, you're just going to see a lot of Twitter, theatre and sport. It's quite an eclectic mix of stuff, so be prepared. Um, Chris, what is, where can we find you? And you can follow me um, on uh, Twitter and Instagram at, at RB underscore Lordy uh, 91. Fantastic. And also you can find me uh, on Twitter at Wheeler underscore Deals. But that's it. That's another episode of the Pitcast, and we'll wrap it up there. So as always... We will see you out on track. <laughs>